I'm going to show you guys how to properly flow a nitrous fuel system. Uh, this is the way it should always be done on any system, whether it's a plate system or a fogger system. Uh, you got to have a flow gauge. Um, you can buy them. Um, Induction Solutions makes a really nice one. Uh, but I, I just made my own. I figured he wants $200 for his, which is really not bad considering what you get. But I made mine for stuff that I had laying around. So it didn't really cost me much at all. What it is, I have a fitting here that I hook my gauge into. It's just a T fitting before right before the solenoid. It goes to a line, goes to another T fitting. Uh, one fitting will go to the gauge, or one hose will go to the gauge, and the other one has a jet in it. And uh, in my case, I got a fogger, so I got a 73 jet. With any any fogger system, 73 jet is all you need. Uh, if you run a plate system, you got to run the same jet that you would run in your plate system. If you got a 53 jet, whatever in your plate, you want to put that 53 jet in your flow gauge. And that just flows fuel back to the fuel cell, or if you don't have a front mounted fuel cell, you just put it in a bucket. So, and I got a, a Barry Grant regulator that uh, my buddy really hates, but I really love because uh, it works awesome. Uh, it's got to be used with the right fuel pump, of course, and uh, if, it, if it's used in the right application, they work awesome. But. I'm going to uh, turn the pump on here and I'll show you guys how this works. Sorry about the noise, it's a very noisy pump. Okay, so right now the fuel is coming up from the pump to the regulator from the regulator out to the solenoids uh, and it's going through this fitting here up into this T and then the fuel is flowing through that jet that I have in here back to the fuel cell and whatever fuel doesn't flow through the jet it shows as pressure on the, uh, on the gauge so now I've got six pounds exactly on the gauge and uh, <clears throat> I can watch my pressure drop let's say I turn the system on without basically this is simulating the system flowing through the solenoid and the, and the fogger and everything so right now we'll just pretend that the solenoid is activated and the system is flying down the track at 200 miles an hour okay so now I'm going to turn the system off so now the, the pump is on but the solenoid is off and it's got just over 8 pounds which is really okay if, if it had 15 pounds it doesn't matter uh, if, even if you have a creep on there like if it's at 8 pounds and it slowly creeps up to 12, 15 pounds or whatever it doesn't really matter as long as when I release this clamp here simulating the solenoid opening that pressure goes back to 6 pounds and it does and it stays there steady. That's why I love that regulator so much. It just holds it so nice and steady. So I'm going to do this again. And we're going to watch for our pressure spike. Now that, it might drop just a hair below six pounds, but it's going to recover right away. So let's watch this. Boom. So it dropped just below six, but it recovered right away. And it stayed stable. It's steady at six pounds. And uh, that's what you want. Turn this pump off there. So, uh, you know, I thought about building a, a system with a, a built in return uh, and having that fuel stay at six pounds with the return with the solenoids open uh, but it's very difficult to do because your return line isn't going to be the same restriction as your jet so you're always going to have a pressure difference um, it doesn't matter what you do 
Uh, you could have a return, I guess, with a regulator on the return. But even then, um, as soon as that solenoid activates and it pours fuel through that jet, the pressure is going to change because the jet is still the restriction. Uh, this is really the only way to do it properly. Uh, I've heard of guys trying to run a, a bleed off of the, um, like before the solenoid so that the pressure doesn't spike. Well, that half a pound pressure that it spikes isn't going to do anything. And it's been proven that it doesn't do anything. I've seen guys with, uh, you know, they got the data loggers with the graphs and everything, and they've run the return system. Uh, it did improve the spike and they've also run it without a return and they noticed absolutely zero difference in performance. Um, reading the spark plugs on, on track performance, there's absolutely zero uh, advantage to running a return system. Um, <clears throat> guys even run the, the cheapy Holly regulators. Um, you've probably seen them, the little, little chrome things or whatever. Uh, Holly, what's the number, 803 or something? They work good too because it's a low pressure system. Uh, you only run six pounds and uh, even the pump that you need to run a nitro system is really nothing because you don't need a fancy pump to run a nitro system because it, there's so little fuel going through there that uh, if you have a pump that makes 10 pounds, that's plenty. So, uh, yeah, I just figured I'd make a little video here on, on, on a little, you know, information on flowing nitrous fuel. And it's really simple to do and it works good. And there's really no magic science to it. So, uh, yeah, that's about all I got for now. I'm hoping to have this car running uh, next week. Rocker arms didn't show and they're not going to show, so I'm putting my old ones back on. And, uh, got new valve springs coming though so I'm going to put new valve springs on but as soon as I get those then I'll get this thing running and uh, drive shaft should be here next week so get that in there and uh, we'll take this thing for a test drive but uh, you guys have a good weekend stay safe and thanks for watching